the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing you are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. For the last time now. You are good, Lord. He is good and his mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The subject of death and the issue of longevity and um, the concept of life has for many years and centuries been a subject of debate and a subject of concern because it's something that seems to happen to the entire human race. Death is something that seems to have um, a power and a force that looks like it cannot be restrained. When it comes upon a person or a family or a territory, it seems to just take them. And human beings have tried to negotiate with death and they found out that you cannot buy long life. You cannot lobby yourself into long life. And so that, that inevitable reality of this system of death has forced mankind to respond in different ways. Others through fear, others through all kinds of mechanisms. And um, particularly for the church, it's been a subject of concern. Is there a formula for long life is there a principle is there some sort of guarantee please pay attention tonight can a man actually make a bold claim about longevity or are we to just walk and hope that someday death will just come and whenever it comes it can take us this has been a great source of confusion in the body of Christ. There are those who are of the opinion that, um, you know, this is what the Bible says and this and that. And there are others who have all kinds of stories, you know, of well-meaning, loving believers, pastors, ministers of the gospel who have died. And um, in all kinds of things, sicknesses have claimed the lives of people accidents acts of terrorism and so on and so forth and so this the complexity of death is something that 
in spite of the civilization of mankind and the many centuries of evolution it's a question that has been at the heart of almost everyone what is the guarantee that this may not be my last night what is the guarantee that i can plan for 20 years and successfully execute it this has led many people for instance into being irresponsible because they feel there is no point laboring going to school paying the price getting a job getting married having kids and then dying and leaving people and so on and so forth and others have um, come up with all kinds of formula i can tell you even for ministers of the gospel it's been a difficult subject um, to teach congregations because as a minister of the gospel you are exposed to all the sides of life you have to attend funerals you have to comfort families at the same time um, you will have to be there at baby the birth of new ones dedications marriages and all of that so on one side you have your members crying at the transition of one and then on one side they are celebrating the incoming of another on one side there is a divorce happening on another side people are celebrating the bliss of marriage so all of these these extremities make um the work of ministry particularly very difficult hallelujah and we must be able to draw strength from the truth of god's word so tonight as instructed by the lord i want to teach us certain things i want us to discuss on the subject of longevity to give us hope courage and to build faith in us say amen before i start like i said earlier on let me express my heartfelt condolence to many of us who have at one point or the other experienced the demise of a loved one i can tell you this that it is really really very painful there are people who have lost father others mothers others both parents others you know and if i'm to ask every one of us to come and hold the mic and say one or two things many of us may have tear dropping stories tragic memories of things that happened surrounded the death of our loved ones and so on and so forth and um, the goal tonight is not to get us emotional the goal tonight is not to um, create a lot of questions in our mind and create a platform for debate the goal tonight is an attempt to look from the vista of the word of god and draw up keys to be able to guide us and to show us like a compass that there is a pathway to longevity hallelujah praise the lord psalm 91 verse 16 you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the lord i will trust in you i will trust in you so let the weak say i i am strong of the Lord He is your hiding place He will always fill your heart with songs of deliverance whenever you are afraid you 
should trust in Him. That's what He expects. You should trust in Him. And let the weak say, I am strong. In the strength. of the Lord hallelujah I want to share a few thoughts number one the first thing I want us to know about let's start from Jeremiah 29 let's start from there Jeremiah 29 Let's be fast. There are lots of scriptures we're going to look at because I want to establish a few things. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Are we there? Okay. One to read everyone is projected. This is the part that I want us to focus on tonight. To give you a what? an expected end a predictable end please listen to me i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord these thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts of good the bible says finally brethren philippians chapter 4 verse 8 whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are noble if there be any good report if there be any virtue and, and any praise he said think on these things and so god is saying i know the thoughts that i think towards you he said they are thoughts of good and not of evil this is god speaking and those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end a predictable end not an unexpected end not an unpredictable end this is the word of the lord hallelujah he says i know the thoughts that i think towards you the thoughts that i think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end hallelujah point number one The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us, according to scripture, is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please very quickly write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please everyone read one to read one more time This is the Bible. This is the truth of God's word. It says, for with long life, will I give him? Did he say, will I give him? That means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity. Are you getting blessed? It says, for with long life, will I satisfy him? And in it, I will show him my salvation. Number two, Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Please, media, you'll be really fast. You'll help us. There are lots of scriptures to look at. And all of them are important. We're establishing the first point tonight. That it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Exodus 23, verse 26. 23, 26. Hallelujah. Hallelujah everyone read the 
the number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne. From eternity before you came. And it says the number of your days I will fulfill it. So that's the first point I want us to establish tonight. And listen, people, I want you to realize that um, I'm a human being. I understand that many of us are receiving this point with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of God's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one but the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled a believer is not just one who has given his heart to the lord a believer is one who has submitted to the authority of god's word as the final say regardless of your experience this is what makes you a believer is you are not a believer just because you were born again you are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of God take precedence and become the final authority over your life. Say amen. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? You must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven. You are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband even if she does not like the way he's behaving even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage her covenant of being with him will force her to submit sometimes he may beat her he may be a foolish man but she has chosen as a submissive wife that i will submit to his authority and i will bear his son name that's what it means to be a believer to be a believer is not to love God when you can explain things. To be a believer is that in the midst of your joy, in the midst of your tears, in the midst of your clarity, in the midst of confusion, regardless of what happens in your life, the word of God stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life. Is God speaking to us? Are we growing as believers? This is a very mature teaching tonight. If you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of God above your life, you will backslide and you will run away from God. That's why we have many atheists today. Many of them were church children. Many of them were folks in Baptist and Presbyterian churches. But their lives were surrounded by so much confusion. And because they think that God has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds, after a prolonged period of disappointment that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits and their conclusion is that god is a liar and their conclusion is that the bible is not true their conclusion is something is wrong there is a deceit somewhere but the bible says the lord is gracious and compassionate He's slow to anger rich in love from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art God hallelujah it is God's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest do you believe that point number two make sure you're writing point number two the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time the Bible did not hide it from us. It didn't leave it as a secret. It's clearly stated in the Bible that it is possible that although this is the desire, it is absolutely possible, supported by scripture, that a man can die before his time. Open bracket and write this. Especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life this is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight but it will test your love for God 
the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time ecclesiastes 7 17 quickly ecclesiastes 7 17 and psalm 55 verse 23 we'll look at those ecclesiastes 7 17 the bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted not only can the life be cut short the bible shows us that someone's life can be added to and someone's life can be subtracted 717 ecclesiastes hallelujah okay let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her okay hallelujah go ahead and read everyone one to read why should thou die before your time we are still going to revisit this verse it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why should thou what die it's a question it's just the, the B part I want us to focus on why is a question that means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions the same way god designed for everyone to be prosperous the bible says that um how did he put it now it says the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all but there are people today who love god and they are still poor is that true there are people today who love god and cannot afford to feed their children but it does not stop the fact that god is a loving god and he has shown a formula for prosperity why should thou die before your time so the bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time psalm 55 verse 23 55 verse 23 are we there all right go ahead and read everyone those outside we apologize looks like they are not seeing the projection but just follow us very carefully one to read shall bring them down into the pit of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what half their days they will not even live up to half their days now forget that he's talking about wicked people i'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added can be cut short can be multiplied can be divided can be subtracted this is the infallible word of god hallelujah so although god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Point number three. This is a hard one now. Receive grace to receive it. Ready? The Bible re reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Write it down. The Bible reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time isaiah 65 verse 20 hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me that could not hold you down you are the reason lord you're seated in majesty Thank you. 
so kibuchi so so kibucho yeah so so kibuchi The Bible reveals painfully but truly that God is never behind us dying before our time. 65 verse 20 of Isaiah. Go ahead and read. One to read. Nor an old man that had not what? Go ahead and read. This is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God. He says, there shall be no more infant of days, nor an old man that had not sealed his days, for a child shall die a hundred years old. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, but as many as believed him, he gave them power to become. As many as believed him, he gave them power to become. Hallelujah. One more scripture. Ezekiel 18 verse 32. Ezekiel Shibakata Baroto Suprati Go ahead and read. One to read. Stop. For what? One more time. One more time. This is God speaking. One more time. Read on. Do you believe this? Please, listen, 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 listen. I'm a human being. Are you getting me? I understand the reality. I understand the pain. I, I understand the gravity. Are you getting me of of um, you will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families and this is consistent i have been to mortuaries i have prayed for people we have lost loved ones in far and near and all kinds of things have happened but i choose to be a believer i choose to be a believer my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name it says for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it prophet Ezekiel. Say it the Lord God. Wherefore as a result of the above, turn yourselves and leave ye. Next point. This is a very serious one and I want us to pay attention to it. Ready? Satan, comma, the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills, and destroys. John 10, 10, please. Satan, the thief, is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills, and destroys. Write this before we look at the scripture in continuation. 
he has strategies through which he achieves this mission satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys he has strategies through which he achieves this mission continue writing topmost among the strategies are sicknesses suicides accidents write it down topmost among these strategies are sicknesses you can write afflictions too suicide accidents these are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives these are his most common strategies 95 percent 95 percent of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities suicides accidents of all sorts fire all kinds of things destruction john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus the son of the living god said i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly the thief satan there are many names that he's given in the bible he's given the serpent he's given the dragon he's given the thief he's called the accuser of the brethren he's called the adversary he's called the destroyer and satan has a strategy please let me have your attention now satan has a strategy there is a series by the grace of god on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently and under that series of angels i'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called satan praise the lord i want us to look very carefully in that series there are a few things about satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits satan is not the most dangerous there are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain they were deliberately not released because the bible says if they are released even the elect will not stand the question is at what point were they bound and what did they do hallelujah when you begin to read don't turn there the book of ezekiel 28 the bible begins to speak of an ancient king We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels look up many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the greek word angelio and it means a messenger let me tell you a few things look up please when ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called lucifer the Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Is, are, you, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? It raises up a lamentation. 
against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says thou which subdued nations talked about the making of Satan and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things i think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what I'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what I'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious capon is still lingering around ABU are you getting what I'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something I don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us but we'll have that series by the grace of God did you know that angels were once mortal beings are you getting what I'm saying now there was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth their dispensation ended and the ones who are with Christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation. Just like, imagine that Jesus comes now. I hope you know when Jesus comes, our dispensation is ended. But the program of God still proceeds. We do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas. But we know the Bible tells us there is, a, there is an age to come. And there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so I guarantee you we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization but not the last as far as creation as far as, as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know who knows maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of god if allowed 
and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of God in that dispensation they will call us angels I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise now watch this when we get to heaven there will not the Bible does not record the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven is that true so if in the earth in my earth life for instance this was my wife these were our children when we get to heaven we all become brothers and sisters are you getting what I'm saying we all become brothers and sisters I can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants and they can look at me and say wow who is this strange being but they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life it is this aberration that was that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation this is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said forget the people you are seeing now they have been before listen the dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them there was nothing called invisible and visible that concept did not exist are you getting my point the dispensations before us you could access the heavens and access the earth now it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning so adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation we never had the opportunity to see what we could do for instance there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction they recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if adam did not fall and eve would have had the opportunity because he would still would have given birth you understand he would have given birth in his perfected state we would have seen the son of adam a womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature that's why in all of the dispensations is only our dispensation that brought jesus the son of the living god to come and die please let's continue that's for another time i'm just trying to show you that the one you call satan lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation hmm. the king of Tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with satan were the brains behind the building of the tower of babel they were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was that was why solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. geography today geography they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth they have found ancient castles did you know that there was a dispensation where where we are standing now was water not land the same way that place where is the mount of ararat where the the ark of noah rested where is it in the earth today we know everest to be the highest where is mount ararat where are the golds where is the temple of solomon that was built with pure gold you mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find 
dust of gold let me tell you most of them are still intact they are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit are we blessed very quickly keys to long life the first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest. They all complement themselves. You don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go. No. There are keys. There are keys. Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking choosing releasing words of life psalm 34 verse 12 to 14 and then we'll look at proverbs 18 verse 21 psalms 34 12 to 14 and then proverbs 18 verse 1 the first key to long life is to speak it the first key to long life is to choose it the first key to long life is to release it hallelujah ready look up let's read psalm 34 verse 12 one to read what man is he that desireth what life and loveth what many days that he may see good read on keep what there is a relationship stop between your tongue its communication and your life the bible says who is he that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14 depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13 who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die yo. the bible says who is he that desires long life don't just laugh about what i'm saying because whether you think you are joking or not the bible says and let it not be said before an angel i made a mistake who is he that wants to activate longevity it says keep the please go to verse 13 13 13, 13. it says keep thy tongue from what and your lips Keep your tongue. I know many of you have said, Kai, people are begged, they are exaggerating. Why do you want to speak? Please be real. You be real in the earth way, you will die like a chicken. Your reality must be the word. It says, I am the way. I am reality. I am absolute reality. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. can we read proverbs 18 verse 21 one to read what will they eat the fruit of what no 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 it's in your bible it says they that love it shall do what death and life this is solomon 
a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? The Bible says, I set before you this day blessing and cursing. Is that true? Death and life. Here's my suggestion. I can't force you, but this is my suggestion. Choose life that you may live, not wish it. Choose life. Koinonia, choose life that you may live. Are you still a believer? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you death and life. But this is my advice for you. Choose life. I speak life. Oh my brother. I speak life Head and not the tail You will prevail I speak life Don't give up the fight Follow your life Hallelujah Everybody say after me I choose life outside can you shout it i choose life those standing at the back the back there can you say i choose life don't let the devil tell you i hope you know what you're saying say it i choose life he said let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so conquer fear i choose life when you speak you release it this is a voice activated planet nothing happens until sound is released i choose life send it to the atmosphere i choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow i choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen jesus said behold i jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth I stand at the door of your heart and I keep knocking I cannot enter until your will permits me as mighty as Jesus is he respects the will of man how much more Satan Jesus the son of the living God the resurrected Christ the eternal one stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years if that man refuses he goes to hell but he was knocking so what do you think makes you think that satan just steps into your heart it's called deception this is the foundation of witchcraft it paints a picture that is not real it makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to wreak havoc in your life say it again i choose life say it again i choose life Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? You say, Lord, let this, me. You say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say, did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Write very quickly, everybody. 
key number two to longevity the fear of the lord the fear of the lord biblical key number two to longevity under the word fear write reverence reverence the fear open bracket reverence of the lord proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 proverbs 10 27 proverbs 10 27 everyone read one to read the fear of the lord yirat adonai reverence for god respect for him honor for him and his ways and what he represents prolongs days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened the bible says the fear of the lord there are two indexes given in the bible to measure the fear of the lord in a man's life number one obedience to his commands and number two service in the house of god obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the lord obedience obedience oh i love him i obey him proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11 i just want to praise you i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to me and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name on high. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said, go and tell Hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness you will die and Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said oh Lord remember how I have walked diligently before you and the Lord sent Isaiah again he said uh -uh, uh -uh. I remember my faithfulness and he went back and said the Lord said I have added for by me Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied and the years of his life shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me. Don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently. 
in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you serve. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. There are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself. Hallelujah. When five minutes without your breath, you are gone. It doesn't matter what your agenda is. It's over. The greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving God. That's how you cheat death. That's how you cheat the grave. That's how you cheat death. You don't cheat death by being afraid of it. You cheat death by serving God. Victorious in life and victorious in death. Paul says, for, for me to live is Christ. And if I die, it is still gain. There is no loss. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, the Lord is speaking to you. You are living your life as young as you are. You think you are too busy. There are many of you outside. As you are looking at my face, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight. I'm saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to. When will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life? Say, I'm not a man of God. I'm a pilot. So what? offered oh god on the altar of sacrifice that i will serve you i told god this is all i do with my life i don't have plan b when i wake up in the morning your kingdom come oh god that's all i do are you getting blessed service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for god i'll serve i'll serve I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best with all my life. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling i must make it as though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands you go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week and there is no sense of conviction in them to serve god there's no service for the kingdom it's not part of their lives they come and they warm the bench and smile around and you tell them are you serving any believer that is not serving in a church not serving in a group your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom you don't deserve to live it says i shall not die but live but live there is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom god will kill a nation to preserve that man I travel all the time. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Tomorrow we are on our way again to be there. All the time. I've seen all varieties of accidents. I've seen all kinds of things. I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations. We have met armed robbers. We were going to um, when we were going to Obomosho, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the route to go towards Kogi. And we saw somebody reversing. They were armed robbers. Brothers and sisters, this gentleman speaking to you, I'm not a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm educated. 
But I want to tell you something. The fear of the Lord can prolong the days of a man. That you spend your life serving God. During the days of our fathers, the popular song is, Lord, here am I. Send me. Right now we are saying, Lord, here am I. Give me. I have come. I finally arrived to collect. See, let me tell you, don't just laugh. If you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your Christian experience, you will be unfruitful in the kingdom. I want to stand before my maker. Mm. I, I, I can only imagine what it would be like that was a song. You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine that on that day when I stand before him, when we are finally done, and we have conquered the earth depopulated the kingdom of hell and turned the heart of many to righteousness that through faith after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation and say lord i am ready and you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the Matthias saying, we watched you all the while. While you were in that crusade, we watched you. While you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils. The family in heaven was watching. For some of us, while you were roaming around gossiping. And all that was your passion was, oh God, husband, time is going. God said, we, we were watching you too. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. We were in your life a few weeks ago. And when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus crusade, when he met me, I saw the way he was saluting me. And I said, I was wondering, what was this for? And he called me and he said, Sir about three years or thereabout when you came into this campus i was just a fresh student when i came in and when you preached i got born again i got filled with the holy spirit and today i'm still standing and doing many things every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people i say lord thank you i have no business being known they don't need to know me that i may decrease that my face cannot heal anybody my picture cannot bless anybody there is one mightier than i he's the one i live and i spend my entire life serving please i speak to you as a servant of god tonight think about your life think seriously about your life and the way you are ignoring the things of god as though there is something better i'm not saying be a pastor be an addict enough when was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel how many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God, not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Impossible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my. There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No. 
sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. So if your work is to bring this water, you bring it with all sense of honor. Not just like you are worshipping a man. Oh, it's a privilege to serve in the house of God. It's a privilege. If you are to clean the chairs, you are cleaning the chairs and say, Lord, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. You can do without me. You have chosen to do with me. You are supposed to bake the cake. You are seated and you know you have grace. You say, no, I need to join the welfare department. I must spend my life. I, I need to contribute. You are excellent in graphic. Oh, the media needs me. Service. 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 Whether you are in Zaria or not, find a church. Find a group. Find a fellowship. Find a, a congregation of believers. Many of us are looking for Gio and Mama. That's the only condition you have given God to serve him. Lord, I will serve you if I will be the mama of the ministry. I will serve you if you give me the name of my parish. The name of your parish is nothing. Let it be your passion. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? I'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit. Because I don't want you to waste your time. Please get back into the mystery of kingdom service. Get back. You spend your time serving a guy because you love him. You go to his house. You wash his clothes. You cook. You iron. And he says, is it not too much? You say, this is the least I can do for you. Is it to express my love? I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassed. Call me a fool. It's true. Eh? If loving you is a crime, let me be a criminal. Look at what you are saying. Look at what you are saying. Shame on any believer who is saying that. I'm telling you, I say it again. Shame on any believer. That because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Skapaka prondo sopro silia paharatu sufratia. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of God. His commandments are not burdensome, brothers and sisters. Let's hurry up. Key number three to long life. Engaging the mystery of the blood. Key number three, let's hurry up. Engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding. engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding there are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance number one in the book of exodus chapter 12 it was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, 
Jesus revealed it to us in the communion. The communion. In the New Testament, he began to teach us the mystery of the communion. And then number three, the mystery of what the Bible calls blood sprinkling. That the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30. We may not have time to read all, but let's see how far we can go. Help us, media. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Next verse. He says, after the same manner he took the cup. Here and there, 25, 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. Wherefore, whosoever, now listen, shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. Open your eyes. I want to show you a mystery. Unworthily. He says, this sacrament, there are two sacraments that Jesus left to the church. One is the sacrament of the communion. The second is the sacrament of baptism. Water baptism. Two of them are still valid. They are important today. He says, whosoever shall take up the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of what? The body and the blood of the Lord. Here comes the mystery. 28. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what? He can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of Jesus Christ relieves life. And because he's, he's eating it unworthily, he will get the opposite of it. Next verse, 30. Read, please. One, two, read. Stop. For what cause? For the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment. For this cause, how many people? How many? How many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them? Have you ever had any death? And they told you that, ah, this death, it was communion that killed the man. Have, is it in your Bible? For this cause, did he say few? Many, many are weak. For this cause, the cause of not discerning the Lord's body, the cause of not respecting it. For this cause of not giving it the honor, it says many are weak. You believe the Bible, right? Many are what? Sick. And many sleep. Wow. For this cause, trivializing the body of Christ, not discerning the power it can release, not discerning that this represents the body of Jesus, beaten, battered, by whose stripes we are healed. It says for this cause. That means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily, for that cause, you will be strong, you will be healthy, and you will live. You will be strong, you will be healthy, and you will live. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we are not going here we don't have the time we have to move on to other things I'm just giving you references Exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death, the Bible calls it the destroyer. That when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel, it will leave and trouble you not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Key number four, honor to parents. Key number four, let's be fast please. Honor to parents, open bracket, both physical and spiritual. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3. Honor 
to parents both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life one to read is projected one to read honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 was the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 20 20 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his rope and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointed how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of god you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of god just talking and smiling the bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical he said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor and respect i honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please i don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your wivon up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of God? How many of you pray for ministers? You stand here criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal. Instead of you to get to the place of prayer, you stand there saying, I always knew, I always suspected. The way I've been looking at that man. You see that? Continue. The Bible says, he that cursed his father and his mother, his lamp, his life will be taken away to obscure that. How many have died as a result of this honor? When a father fights his son, he loses his honor. When a son fights his father, spiritual or physical, he loses his life. That's why many people sadly to say, many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries, break out and jeopardize the life of the Jew thinking God called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father his lamb will be taken are we learning number what now number five walking in wisdom the fifth key to long life walking in wisdom Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16 those outside if you are still with us say amen god bless you all right proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16 walking in wisdom 
walking in wisdom foolishness can take a man's life foolishness can cut short a man's life walking in wisdom hallelujah the bible says happy is the man that what finds wisdom that means you have to look for it and the man that gets it understanding 14 for the merchandise of it are better than silver and they gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her 16 length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor if you embrace wisdom it will also open you up to long life look at me how many people do you know who cannot drive hello they cannot drive and then they go and carry a truck and kick it because they are trying to impress their colleagues are you seeing how foolishness costs the life of people and then they go to the road they have given the spirit of death unrestrained access how many people drive their cars foil is leaking down are you getting what i'm saying foil is leaking and they don't care there are people who who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus they connect it directly to the carburetor and from the bus, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running they are smiling how many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal the tire is so it is the, the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight that's the degree to which the car is disaligned and yet he plans to travel to lagos the bible says wisdom is profitable to direct are we blessed a man takes beer alcohol and tells you can i give you a ride you say really you get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut life wire they dry their clothes and smile they have been doing it i i know how to do it no 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 i'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives you plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie there are many of us the way you own your car there is something only you know how to touch you touch the wires and then something down you just touch it and it sparks cas, cas, and then the thing starts you've been doing it for many years preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you will see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school is god teaching us wisdom there are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil you buy one jerry can of foil and keep it close there are babies there there are all kinds of things people are inhaling it there are others you never eat well i'm showing you how people partner with satan to destroy their lives you never eat well there's no difference from the day god you were in poverty and now that god is even helping you there is no difference look at mechanics look at what they eat same thing one lady comes with 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 a lele or something and serves them that's what they eat every day every night they take tea in the night see that kind of unhealthy that's why the life expectancy level of africa is about is it 30 or 40. scientifically proven we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things 
is only God that can tell the kind of risks people take every day every day there's food on fire you made yam the water is boiling you want to use your hand to carry it out can't you look for a spoon if the spoon is missing can't you be patient why must you cut you you came complete why must you go back with one hand yes you will make heaven but is that a rich life is that a rich life why will you cut short your life because of carelessness it's god speaking to us Number six. The sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We are getting deeper now. We are getting to the area where we are going to pray. Luke 10 verse 19. Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold! see don't be ignorant i give you power to tread upon serpents upon scorpions and over how many how many all the powers of the enemy it says and nothing shall by any means harm you i have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately it said with wise counsel make war With wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default when the spirit of death is in an environment what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity this is the standard operation there are a few exemptions however but the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey are you getting what i'm saying now let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic a subtopic under point six the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. may i remind you ladies and gentlemen if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real are you hearing what i'm saying if anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft i just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 proverbs 1 11 and then psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here give us deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up everyone read want to read there shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what pass through fire or that uses divination or an observer of times an enchanter or a witch next verse or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer next verse for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. God himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world. There are enchanters. There are stargazers. There are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men. The church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of Satan. Nahum chapter 3 verse 4. Just look up so that um, since it's projected. One to read. Because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot, the what? Mistress of witchcraft. Shakata, bayakata. 
that sell what? Look at what she sells. She can she look at her goods. The way you sell pure water. The mistress of witchcraft. And say you can come and meet me. And I will give you Africa. I can give you this village. I can sell that soul to you. It's in your Bible. It says she sells what? Nations through her wardom. Her fraternity with human beings. That means human agents come to meet her. I want access to a territory. And what does she sell again? Families. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? That there are witchcraft activities that sell families. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23. is a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? All right, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay, it's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. Where's my handkerchief? They sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice word for as long as you just say, God... I'm here and I love you. Everything is all right. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting. They are everywhere. Let me tell you. Especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbeans. You were born an African. You belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God will not need to go through this. But for now, we must pay that price. Are you there? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Next verse. Let's look at it quickly. And will ye people, oh, and will ye what? Me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread. To slay what? Read that part. To slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them, they killed their children and an indignation rose and the war ended. It's still being practiced today. Men who give others for their lives. I prophesy to you, any man that invokes your name on any altar, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, they will carry their dead body from that altar. I say it again, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that any charm, any altar that invokes your name, the death of another may my god visit them with judgment yeah. next next verse lord god behold i am against your pillows wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls to make them fly watch this look at the mystery of witchcraft and i will tear them from your arms and we let the souls go even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly when verse what now two verses left your handkerchiefs i will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody's walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit i 
and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that i am the lord your god let's read 22 because i can't read all those ones whom i have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at these guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those governments tonight catch fire shake it may those governments catch fire proverbs 1 verse 11 proverbs 1 verse 11 Shabarato Totobaya. watch this if they say come with us let us lie and wait for what let us do what let us wait for blood let us lock privately for the innocent without cause meaning they did not do anything but we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit ah. the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12 when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read He said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us but i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because God knows that alone we cannot make it. There is an advantage that wicked spirits have. They have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And so he gave us angels. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. Don't turn there. Just write it. Joshua 5 verse 13 to 14. Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel. 
project for us project for us second kings 19 verse 35 second kings 19 verse 35 while she's doing that in the book of daniel chapter 10 when you read from verse 13 the bible says that archangel michael contended with the prince of persia he was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy daniel but daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer when we pray we activate angels when we speak we activate angels second kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the lord went out and smote in the camp of the assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses one angel imagine how powerful they are about 185 thousand people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the bible tells us that when satan came to carry the body of moses satan wanted to come and carry the body of moses and michael the archangel again he came to contend with satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies they fight to preserve our lives preserve our bodies preserve our destinies psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 read verse 11 one to read for he shall give what his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in psalms 103 verse 20. psalm 103 verse 20. please begin to prepare the oil there's there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly very quickly quickly bring the oil for me please don't open it yet just bring it these are the instructions that the lord gave me psalms 103 verse 20. go ahead and read one to read bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do what his commandment how do they walk hearkening they walk at the instance of his word they walk at the instance of his word as you pray and declare the word you activate them you activate them you activate them as you speak god's word the moment they hearken to the word they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the lord revealed to me in my place of retreat and he said teach my people these are the keys to long life these are the keys to long life you can live long and the lord gave me an instruction he said according to the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the oil anoint my people i don't do foolish things give me the oil i'm not one of those men of god that just does things impulsively and the lord gave me an instruction he said when i was done with that retreat i should come back and based on two scriptures the lord gave me isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Mande brando and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder it shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that hunt your soul unto death it shall come to pass 
that by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth the avenger of men that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing there are charms that must be broken because of the anointing there are people sentenced to death sentenced to accident sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil the second scripture exodus chapter 12 please please everyone turn there i sense the anointing of the spirit very strongly right now please turn there this is the instruction that the lord gave me make sure everyone is participating right now no matter how far those following us online they can get oil if, if they have access to verse 7 please verse 7 and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel go to verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance I am the Lord this is what the Lord told me in the secret place he said I'm arising as a mighty man the blood of the innocent Christ before me that's what the Lord told me and the Lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations and the Lord told me vengeance there will be vengeance upon witchcraft I had the Lord and he revealed this to me my eyes was open in the spirit and I saw like a cloud moving across territories and the Lord told me by the mystery of preservation you preserve my people that's why I'm carrying this oil is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time inside and outside pray hallelujah can we have the plates please very quickly lift your voice and say after me in the name of jesus come on say it like a believer in the name of jesus every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood i command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray i shall not die but live to declare
hallelujah we just have two prayer points say after me in the name of Jesus every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own in the name of Jesus I come against you lift your voice and speak stargazers necromancers those that trade the souls of men they cut short destinies hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of Jesus I declare the seal of the blood over my life my loved ones my going out my coming in no accident shall take my life no terrorist shall take my life no sickness shall take my life I am secure in Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your loved ones. No death. No death. No death. The destroyer cannot plague my life. The destroyer cannot plague my family. The destroyer cannot plague my destiny. I go it out. for soul winning you will never experience certain dimensions of God's power hallelujah he said this sign shall follow as you go I remember in 2006 that was the first time we we're going to have a corporate crusade hallelujah we had a crusade in Plateau State didn't have an idea of what we we're going to face and when we got there I remember them telling us I think they met a Jimmy and said you people came to preach here the place, the venue they use for their traditional festival. That's where we said we wanted the crusade. They said we would not get it, but we finally got it. Hallelujah. And then when it was time to pray, we were not much. Two, two 18-seater buses. That was E and I then. Hallelujah. And when we got there, we began to preach. We began to preach. Then it was time for miracles. We had nothing except a word from God. You better hear God when you stand before those villagers. Hallelujah. They are not just young people that you can just deceive. Hallelujah. And then I called everyone. I said the whole team, all of you just pick one person. And you better pray for a case that will need medical confirmation. Hallelujah. I'll never forget it, Jimmy. Let me tease him. He went to an elderly woman who had, was it a swelling or something on her hand? And with every ounce of, of fear and faith mixed together, he prayed for this woman and when she got healed, you know, 
elderly people they don't tell lies they tell you I'm, I'm not healed though and then when she got healed and he confirmed he was so happy and he was so excited hallelujah we saw all kinds of miracles for some of us it was our first time of experiencing certain fearful levels of miracles hallelujah the blind see the deaf hear manifestations of the spirit hallelujah and these things will follow you they are signs hallelujah a sign points somewhere it's not an end in itself are you following me now so the anointing of the holy spirit empowers you for the ministry of signs and wonders to the end that the people will know that jesus is lord hallelujah so don't be afraid go and meet them and they say i have a challenge tell them in the name of the lord jesus i will pray for you you say lord if you embarrass me in this place i was minding my business all by myself no you have to take a step of faith i've always said it if you will ever pray for a dead body the first thing is to stand close to one hallelujah never forget my experience they called me to go and raise a dead man three days the anatomy um you know the mortuary or what do they call it hallelujah and when i stepped in i saw several kinds several dead people i said which one <sighs> it says it's a who raise the dead when you see a real dead person hallelujah three days and um i laid my hands and i prayed i did everything i knew to do when i prayed three times three is enough in the spirit when it doesn't work after three times be sure it may not work hallelujah and i prayed for the person i prayed for the person i prayed for the person i told the people get me out of this place you didn't pay me i didn't kill the person hallelujah but then times will come when your shadows will raise the dead that's why god is preparing us how many of you believe that oh yes we are coming to that time when an accident will happen and you you perform more miracles unconsciously than you will do consciously hallelujah thank you jesus christ Yahweh
go ahead and pray. Bakaya. A shout that means I'm coming out of every challenge. It's a shout. At the shout of grace. At the shout of grace. Who are down mountain before Zerubbabel. It's a shout of victory. Walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil, my cup burneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I dwell in the house of the Lord. There's a reason why we shout in the spirit. There's a reason why we rejoice. We stir up the waters of the spirit. Because the Bible says whoever at the stirring of that water, whoever steps in will be healed. Oh, there's a stirring. We are not shouting for nothing. We are shouting because we know the one who can feed 5,000 men with five loaves and two fish. The one who transforms our lives, causing us to know more of him. There is no one Be blessing and honor And glory and power forever Be your blessing and honor And glory and power forever Hear me, I don't know about you but I know God is not wasting his time building me. I know that there is something. There is the ability of the spirit at work in me. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above all that we think. He said, according to the power from the Greek word energes, the energy, the energizing of the spirit that worketh in us. We are not ordinary people. God is training us, building us by his word. Let me tell you something I don't know about you, but I am convinced that resident in me is an ability. The power of the spirit of God. To cause change, to build, to bless, to change, to transform my world. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the obedient obedience to Christ. He's transforming everything, transforming everything. He's renewing everything in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ, in obedience to Christ, in obedience to Christ, in obedience to Christ, in obedience to Christ. Let's see who comes in the name of our God. Let's see who comes. In the name of our God, the city
the Lord. You're the King. We hear you, Lord. We worship. We bless your name. Most high. Most high. Lamb of God, I worship you. You're the Lamb of God, I worship you. the spirit of the Lord causing the eyes of men to open and the ears of many for you step into a season that you will not say at the spirit of the Lord I am causing the hand of the great to walk upon great parts the Lord says I'm causing the hand of the great to walk upon for it shall be a season like none other say at the spirit of the Lord it shall be a season like none other, said the Spirit of God. It shall be a new season. I open up new portals. I cause you to walk in great paths. I cause crooked paths to become straight, say at the Spirit of God, because you're learning of my ways. Because you're learning of my ways. Because you're learning of my ways. I cause the coal of fire to come upon your tongue, that you speak the mysteries of the kingdom. I cause the coal of fire to come upon your tongue, that you communicate the counsel of the Father. For I will teach you wisdom, say at the Spirit of the Lord. For I will teach you wisdom, and I will cause you to walk in my way, say at the Spirit. For I will teach you wisdom, I will teach you wisdom, I will teach you wisdom. Have I not said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death? I will teach you wisdom, and I will cause you to walk in my precept, my precept. I will teach you wisdom, the path of wisdom, the path of glory. I step in teaching you wisdom, causing your ears to hear and to behold, stepping into new dimensions. For I teach you wisdom, say at the Spirit of the Lord. Harvest first as a seed and then it spreads, says the Spirit of the Lord. Springs from for I cause men to walk in new realms of my glory. I cause men to walk in new realms of my glory. I cause men to walk in new realms of my glory. The seeing eyes and the hearing ears I give unto men. The seeing eyes and the hearing ears I give unto men. It is by my spirit and for this season the seeing eyes and the hearing men ears I give unto men. When you learn of my ways and I teach you my precepts I will glorify you. Say at the spirit of God when you for ordained predestinated glorify you. Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Aparianda Gabaya. Lekapros Gabarian Taktuzimahadiana Kabas. 
Randa Gabarato Zovagati Alamosia. For it comes speedily. It comes speedily, said the Spirit of the Lord. The manifestation of the things that I've spoken unto you. In this season, I cause an acceleration. It comes speedily by the Spirit. Those things that I've spoken unto you. The communications of the night times, they are the Spirit of God. It comes speedily. The communications of the night time, say at the Spirit of the Lord, I cause it to come speedily. The communications of the night time, say at the Spirit of the Lord, I cause it to manifest speedily. By grace, by grace, that's what I hear in the Spirit. By grace, by grace, by grace. By grace. Hallelujah. When you learn of the ways of the Spirit, you are built and equipped, trained and empowered, and you will begin to function as though you are a God in the earth. Psalms 82 verse 1, he said, God stands in the congregations of the mighty, and he speaks to them. Then he says, know ye not that ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, they know not, neither do they understand. They walk in darkness. He said the earth is out of course. Koinonia is a place where we learn the ways of the spirit. For Job said there is a path where the eyes of the vulture has not seen. There is a place where the feet of the lion has not trodden upon. And when God brings us into these realities in the spirit, causing us to comprehend the things of the spirit, the knowledge that you have in the spirit is the authority that you will command in this realm. That's what the Holy Ghost is communicating unto me. I have said ye are gods. I have said ye are gods. Rise up mighty men. I have said ye are gods. Say at the spirit of the Lord. Have I not said ye are gods. Rule. Rule. Take charge. Subdue. Take territories. Say at the spirit of the Lord. I have said ye are gods. I have said ye are gods, gods to the system, gods to the system, I am said. Hallelujah, hallelujah, listen to me. One of the greatest tragedies in the church is that we do not understand the ways of the spirit. Hallelujah. We have many ways. We have many methods to do different things. Hallelujah. But there is a way. The Bible speaking. Jesus speaking to Nicodemus. He said the wind bloweth where it listed. You cannot tell where it's going. And where it's coming. He says so is one. Who is led of the spirit. He said for as many. Who will allow themselves to be under. The governing influence of the spirit. He says such are the sons of God. The Greek word here is weos. Those who by reason of knowledge have attained the same status with their father. The ways of the spirit. The Bible is not just a religious information teaching us to know about the stories and the history and walk in it. There you will find rest. The rest is when you find the ancient path. There are paths, brothers and sisters, pathways in the spirit that lead men to greatness, that lead men to power, that lead men to insight, to wisdom, the communication of the spirit. But until we search and then we are diligent enough to allow the Holy Spirit to bring us revelation. Paul said for this course, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus that he will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you will comprehend spiritual mysteries 
when the eyes of your understanding is flooded with light you will see where men do not see you will walk where men will not walk for he will give you light that will rule in the day and light that will rule in the night he said he made many lights but then he made two great lights and one to rule in the day one the other to rule in the night Lord we ask for the path of the spirit we don't just want to do religion we ask for the paths of the spirit show us the ways that will cause us to walk in greatness show us the ways that will cause us to walk in kingdom power and authority legislating the council of the kingdom in the earth as it is in the heavens representing him as true ambassadors of the government of our father that's why i say unto you an heir as long as he's a child different not from a slave galatians chapter 4 though he be lord of all although by inheritance his inheritance is royalty and greatness he said for as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave but is under tutors and governors grant unto us knowledge O god grant unto us knowledge that we will stop walking as men men and begin to live as supernatural people hallelujah praise the lord god is furnishing us one of the goals of koinonia is that we understand the ways of the spirit there is a way that brings the anointing there is a way that brings wealth and glory there is a way that brings prosperity there is a way that brings increase there is a way that brings power for until you understand the ways of the spirit when you understand the ways of the spirit you can align yourself and then it will be done in only legislating the earth that which has been completed in the heavens we do not try to initiate things that have not been established this is the secret of victory in this realm that it be done please represent access i will give you access to the ways of the spirit and by reason of that access everything you bind in the earth would have been what has been bound in the spirit the ability to stand in a position and legislate things across ter- as we stand in this atmosphere we are not only receiving impartations of the spirit but our minds have been aligned and adjusted to his ways romans chapter 12 verse 1 says i beseech three brethren by the mercies of god that he offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he said that is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says and do not be conformed do not pattern your mind after this world comes from the greek word aeon this age he said but be ye transformed how by the renewing there has been a disalignment between heaven and the earth and so the holy spirit brings us to a point of alignment so that it will be established in the earth the realities that are in the heavens his ultimate agenda according to colossians chapter 1 and ephesians chapter 1 the universal counsel of god is that all things be headed up in christ and that the multifaceted dimension will be revealed in and through the church this is why he's empowering us so lord we thank you for your ways thank you for your word we are not interested in just bible stories and theological dissertations we are interested in knowing the ways of the spirit for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom he said doth not wisdom cry she walks in the streets and cries he said get wisdom get wisdom exalt her and she shall promote thee he says she shall bring an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her in all thy getting get understanding and he says the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding unto the simple lord we ask for the ancient path according to jeremiah 33 verse 3 says call unto me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things we pray that you cause our eyes to see great and mighty things hallelujah i like us to pray tonight but let's consider a scripture just sit down briefly god bless you
presence of God is very strong and mighty in this place. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2. Someone with ulcer, I rebuke it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you came here with ulcer. Listen to me, it's gone now. We are not negotiating. I stand as touching the authority of the king of this kingdom. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that you are perfect. First Corinthians chapter 2. Bless us tonight, Lord. Verse 4. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Verse 6. However, hmm. we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. The word perfect is mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the princes of this age that come to nothing. 7. But we speak wisdom, the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this age knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I had not seen. Hallelujah. Look up. Verse 9 tells us that there are things that God has prepared. Is that correct? It tells us that I has not seen. Ear has not heard. It has not come into the comprehension of any man. What God has prepared. That means God has prepared something. Hallelujah. But for some reason, the ear has refused to hear and to understand the ways to access those things. The eye has refused to see. The heart has refused to understand. But he said there are things that are prepared. There are treasures. There are things in the spirit that have been prepared. But the Bible says something interesting. Let's read on. Verse 10. It says, But God has revealed them not to everybody. There are a class of people that although eyes, they, there are things that God has prepared. And the ordinary people cannot see. The Bible makes us to understand that when David came from war with three of his servants, they went to the priest and they were asking for bread. And the priest told them something. He said, there is no ordinary bread. However, but there is a hallowed bread. The deep things of the spirit. The Bible says that these things have been in store. However, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not been revealed unto any man. Hallelujah. He said, but God has chosen. He, by, let's read on. Help us tonight, Lord. But God has revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit. So the, the spirit of God is the revealer of the secrets of God. There are secrets. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of the secrets of God. In the archives of the spirit, there are things, there are revelations, there are patterns, there are strategies for the victory of a believer. But the Bible makes us understand that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. He said they have not even come to the comprehension of man's heart. However, there is a class of people that have dared to press and compel God to reveal to them these impossible things by the spirit. And then he says something, and this is the basis of my message tonight. He says, for the spirit searches. The spirit has the ability to go to the treasury of God and find out where are those things that have been locked up in the scroll that will not be opened by ordinary people, that contain revelations and dimensions of authority and power and grace and insight. The Bible says, there is something that a believer does that cause the Holy Spirit to start searching and the Bible says when he searches he will find what the mind of God is and he has the ability to bring it back and communicate it to the believer hallelujah 
tonight i'm teaching us how to access the deep things of the spirit and the man stood in front of me and measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he measured a thousand cubits again and then it was to the knees and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to his chest he said and he measured a thousand cubits again and it was an overflowing river and he said wherever that river went to every fish that was dead would come alive he said the river flowed from the east side of the temple there are many spiritual mysteries that God's people are ignorant of and lack of pressing into these dimensions of knowledge has been the reason why we do not command the kind of authority that will give us access to be true ambassadors why will someone come and do something and then another person cannot do it and we serve the same god we believe the same god hallelujah that the access the insights the knowledge and the understanding you have is your strength the strength of a believer is not his physical muscle the strength of a believer is the quality of truth the pathways of the spirit that you have been able to understand the ways of god for when you know the ways of god you will walk like a god in the earth has nothing to do with age hear me has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with your denominational background has everything to do with your desire to press into more of him i began to seek the presence of god to seek the manifestation of his spirit and his power in my life 2005 hallelujah we were roommates and we will worship i will just stay on the keyboard and worship and he will play the guitar and the presence of god will come and fill the room consuming fire sweet perfume his awesome presence fills this room that was our experience and we began to press and then the lord began to show me his ways i said lord i'm tired of religion i'm tired of church i'm tired of deceiving myself with many scriptures in my head but there's nothing in how many of you are tired and really want to be making structural growth in the spirit hallelujah there are many believers that have so many scriptures in their head we have i i and so my concept of spiritual growth is not how much you finish your bible my concept of spiritual growth is how much you understand the ways of god you understand his principles and his precepts how much you have come into alignment with the things of the spirit that you can reveal his glory you can be a portal that opens up men to the realities of the spirit Paul prayed a prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Let's look at it quickly and then we'll come back to Colossians and we'll come back to 1 Corinthians. The glory of the risen Lord verse 15 Ephesians 1 Wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love all to all saints 16 cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you what the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 oh this is our press tonight the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light enlightened it will cause you to know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 
and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power so Paul is saying these things have been established in the spirit but he's praying and say Lord that you open their eyes that they will access the spirit of wisdom and revelation tonight I want to share a simple secret with us and then we will pray for when you know how to access the secrets of the spirit friends you will reign in this life hear me you will not reign because you bear a Christian name it's a rule thou in the midst of your enemies the great man Bishop Oyedeko he said how that things were not working in his life at a point and he decided to go on a word fast he took the word of god and he went to encounter the spirit of wisdom and revelation he climbed upon the mountain for three days traveling and digging in the spirit and there he found certain treasures hear me every man you see trailing the place somewhere has caught certain treasures in the spirit for the proof that you have caught it is that there will be a ripple effect in this earth realm and certain men out of their desperation for God have stumbled across certain treasures in the spirit in their sincere quest for God they stumbled across certain things that set them above are you listening to me I studied the Bible for a major part of 2005 and I found out that the wisdom of God the spirit of wisdom and revelation was necessary to reign and to rule in this life and I began to pray I said Lord you've got to give me this wisdom and revelation do something in me then the Lord led me to this verse and he said son I will teach you how to tap into this ex these are the exact words of god the deep things of the spirit oh for you don't find gold on the surface how many of you agree with me you don't find gold on the surface you do business in the deep for if you can access the deep things of the spirit you will come up with treasures but the bible says there were two significant lights and at their appearance they had the capacity to overshadow every other light many of us have pockets of lights here and there and here and there we are hitting and you know trial and error spiritual victory however when you touch the greater light listen when you touch the greater light you will command victory victory hallelujah God showed me a light in his word concerning deliverance and casting out of devils when I caught that revelation that was the end of it I said I don't care what level I'm sorry to say not to insult anybody but I see people stand and sweat and pray and roll over demons and do all kinds of things and say how many are left and demon says 18 four hours he's crying the Lord showed me a light he showed me a light in his word you see when you stand to function i like you to know that in the realm of the spirit the lord opened my eyes in a vision some time ago and i saw i saw the spirits of men emitting lights i follow me now emitting light and i wondered i said lord what is the meaning of this and he told me the degree of their illumination is equivalent to their understanding of spiritual things and i saw some people emitting more light their spirits were emitting more light in chemistry we do it you want to find out certain informations about some compounds what happens you expose them to light light reveals in the realm of the spirit from the light you emit i can know your spiritual level are you following me now so when jesus was transfigured he showed us how his spirit man looked pure light the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light and every time we press to be like him we become that light hmm. and as we are changed into that light we begin to command the authority that that light brings 
that's the reason why someone can speak to a demon and say leave and the demon just looks and beats up the person and then another person passes unconsciously and the demon is crying let me tell you the difference is not their height the difference is the light that is illuminated in the spirit hallelujah and light means knowledge and so paul prays that our eyes be flooded with what light light that we come into the understanding of god's principles such that if i meet you today and your finances are in a wreck i should be able to stay with you and after two weeks i should be able to transmit a light are you following me now that will set you ablaze i follow me now when i step into a family and i find out that there is chaos what happens by spiritual understanding you know what principle and what pathway to take are you getting are you following me this is how to bless people you don't bless people by sympathizing with them you bless people by understanding the ways of god and introducing the patterns of the spirit to their lives Jacob understood the ways of God that would bring increase. And when he saw the animals of Laban, he applied a dangerous spiritual principle. I'm still trying to find it out till now. I've read that scripture again and again. I said, Lord, there is a key to prosperity that you must show me. What did Jacob see that made him carry a black stick, dropped it close to water, and made animals to begin to reproduce after what they were seeing? Hmm light in the spirit the increase and the expansion that we're experiencing by the grace of god in this ministry came as a result of light one day i was studying and i was studying a book by a man of god called dyke hayward mills and i found something interesting in scripture a simple greek word called anakazo the compelling power of the spirit an ability of the spirit that compels a man into the will of god jesus gave a parable he said the feast was ready but there were not enough people and he sends the servants to go and bring people and one said he just got married he has to be with his wife another person said he bought a property he has to see it hallelujah and then he said go and bring in all the lepers and the rest and he used the word jesus sent them in the parable he said go and compel them to come he used the word anakazo and the spirit of god brought that light friends the light you have and the understanding of god's ways is what will cause you to rule how many of you believe what i'm sharing is it making sense to you or am i just making noise so that your pursuit for spiritual growth would not just be haphazard there are many of us who our spiritual growths are not constructive yes you are doing devotion but what about the ways of god do you know today that you did not know last week that's the proof that you are growing hallelujah we stumble across the spiritual principle of god that brings wealth and prosperity and he opened the eyes of our understanding to it by the spirit and even we cannot stop what the spirit of god is doing the miraculous we didn't always experience the miraculous but as we kept pressing into god we kept pressing into god i got angry and I told God, I said, Lord, I'm tired of headaches just being healed. How about creative miracles? Can those things happen? And then I had a dream. In the dream, I was teaching. And when I was teaching, I was telling them that there were body parts in heaven. And all of these things. And, and then a voice just sounded to me and said, Josh, you are not walking in any significant healing compared to the dimensions you should be walking in. And I was sad. I was really sad and then the voice spoke in the dream he said you must find a scripture where i showed something about creative miracles and then it will be released in your life and then the lord told me don't use google don't use anything and the holy spirit gave me expo he said it's in the book of psalms 
read Psalms, you will stumble across something that David saw. Are you following me, please? Are you getting blessed? The Bible says Jacob went to a place. Did you know that where Jacob laid down, his father had anointed that place and made a covenant there? Little did he know. And so he stumbled to the place of the covenant and he laid down. Suddenly, a portal was opened. And Jacob saw. He said that he was in a dream and he saw angels ascending. What is it about this place that made angels to be ascending and descending? And at the top of it was Yahweh himself. And he gave him a revelation that he only would have gotten. In the year King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, something happened. Ezekiel chapter 1, the Bible says, Ezekiel sat by the water brook and suddenly he was caught up in the spirit. There are dimensions that will give us access to rule and to reign. Let's go quickly to share that one. First Corinthians, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. So we have established from First Corinthians. Look up, please. We have established from First Corinthians that there are treasures that have been kept in store for us. Do we all agree? Do we all agree? Please help me. Hallelujah. That there are treasures that have been kept for us. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not been revealed to the heart of man what God has kept. But the Bible says there are a class of people that understood certain spiritual dimensions. Isn't it amazing that David saw things pertaining the new creation although he was living in the Old Testament? How did David see and see the coronation of God? The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right. How did he see it? How did David know that the Holy Spirit can stay in a man? He said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit. How did David know that the throne of God had gates and courts? He said, enter his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Part of the victories that we command by the Spirit came as a result of uncommon insight that were given by the Spirit. And I want to share with us that way and then we pray. There is a, there is an activity of the Holy Ghost that we need to understand. He is not just an advocate, not just a teacher, not just a strengthener. Comes from the word paracletos. But he is the revealer of the secrets of God. I need to introduce this dimension of the Holy Spirit to us. As the revealer of the secrets. The Bible says. But God has revealed them to us. How? By his spirit. How does the spirit reveal it? By what? Searching. The Holy Ghost has an ability to search the mind of Christ. And when he searches he finds the treasures of God. That are responsible for our victory in this earth realm. And then he begins to communicate these ways to us and then when we find these ways we will begin to walk therein the bible says verse 11 for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man he said even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god hallelujah but then he starts by saying something interesting he says when we are among them that are mature we speak a kind of wisdom he said it's not the hidden wisdom i mean it's not the regular wisdom the age that is governed by age and intellect and all of this hallelujah he said it's the hidden wisdom and he said when we begin to speak that hidden wisdom it will cause the spirit to begin to search follow me that every time this wisdom of the spirit is communicated there is a searching in the spirit the holy ghost begins to search and find certain things about the mind of Christ and then brings them and reveals it to those who are communicating this wisdom. Are you following me now? The wisdom of Christ. When you begin to communicate this wisdom in the spirit, you are giving the Holy Ghost an opportunity to begin to search the minds of Christ concerning your destiny that when you begin to pray and when you begin to communicate this wisdom 
the spirit of god goes to the archives of your destiny and begins to find out the blueprint of god for every season and then he communicates it to you and then in obedience you begin to walk in the path of the spirit this is the secret of victory there are many people who miss out on the plan the goals the seasons of god in their lives because they do not understand how to search by the wisdom of the spirit so tonight i'm teaching us how to access the deep things of the spirit the bible makes us to understand that god left a prayer language with the believers listen hallelujah and the concept of tongues and praying in tongues as it relates to our edification has not been understood by many people how are we edified when we pray in tongues yes we understand that we are built up we are edified but how are we edified hallelujah one of the ways we are edified is that when we pray we access the deep things that are in the mind of the father look at me you do not know by yourself the prophetic blueprint of your life i hope you know that you do not know by yourself and hear me sometimes you search the scripture but you cannot find verbatim certain revelations that are customized to your own life i don't know if you understand what i'm saying here and there you may find stories and principles that you can apply but there are certain times you come in your life where you need a customized strategy by the spirit are you following me now at that time the holy ghost goes to the mind of the father and begins to search the file and the archives of your life how did god design that you will overcome in this area and then the holy ghost searches and he comes and begins to communicate these things to you hallelujah god gives you a, a ministry and you are praying and say lord we are trusting you for increase the moment you engage in this principle in the spirit suddenly the spirit begins to search he begins to search and he finds out and delivers to you the blueprint that god has designed for you somebody else will use that same blueprint and fail because he needs a strategy by the spirit are you following me david Yongicho was praying for increase the pastor of the largest church in asia was praying for increase and things were not working and as he began to search the mind of christ by the spirit god began to communicate certain things to him i'll never forget when we we're preparing for massacre crusade we had stretched ourselves uh it was three days to the crusade and we needed almost 0.8 million or something in three days we had to raise it the pfn people were calling in abuja and say send money and all of this hallelujah and because of this secret god had taught me i said lord there has to be a strategy how many of you know that every time you encounter a roadblock in your life is simply that you need a strategy until you get the strategy you will suffer and perish but when you get the strategy you will you will rise ah. i don't care what the challenge is when the strategy comes light has come you will arise you will shine why because your light is come until the light comes you remain there and so i began to pray and as i began to pray in the spirit the holy ghost began to search and then he revealed to me a strategy and that was the strategy that we activated by the spirit and he helped us we had a successful crusade and even on the crusade ground a time came we needed some more funds and god gave us a strategy many people suffer and perish and and languish in life although they are kings they are tongue-talking people because they do not understand this dimension of the spirit as the revealer of the secrets so many people try to push through their life hoping and wishing that what they are doing will bring the desired results you want a job you just sit down and guess and say the natural thing to do is to submit cvs why will we not go to the spirit who is the revealer of the secrets search the archives of the father give me some accuracy and precision in my life are you following me now so that when you search the mind of the father you will understand what is the counsel of god for you and then the lord tells you just get up 
and go and greet brother john hold your cv on your hand it doesn't make sense but that's the spiritual strategy that the lord has are you following me now i'm teaching you how to access the deep things of god and you get up and you move like a madman and while you're walking there is a divine connection and then brother john comes with his friend and he says we are just looking for someone strategy comes from the greek word stratomai the patterns of the spirit that leads to victory hallelujah i began to seek the face of the lord over the pros our prosperity as a ministry and i said lord what is the strategy and then as i began to pray in tongues a scripture came to me follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise that was a strategy straight up no waste of time no beating about the bush i started finding out from successful ministries what were the principles hallelujah and i stumbled across a revelation that bishop Oedeko shared and he hit he struck a chord in me he said this ministry he said the lord showed him something that the ministry tithes as a ministry and i told the treasurer i said never should there be any week that we will not tithe and i activated that revelation by reason of the strategy are you following me now strategies by the spirit one time i was in port Harcourt, i'll never forget didn't have much in my account i just sat down and then i said lord bless me and lord told me give me an instruction he said go and empty your account i said lord, how much is there that you want me to empty and god said just do it and do you know while i was preparing to go and empty my account when i emptied my account a few i think the next day or so 6 10 i will never forget 6 10 in the morning a stranger called me called me shaking profusely under the anointing he said is this joshua selman i said yes he said please send me your account number i said who are i told him who are you say it's not necessary just send me your account number strategies in the spirit many people we suffer so much because we do not know the dimension of the holy spirit as the revealer of secrets the bible says that he searches the mind are you getting blessed tonight because i want us to pray there are many things we need direction for and precision for and the holy ghost is there to bring us into that reality sometimes when i want to preach i say lord what am i going to share and i just pray in tongues and as i look just praying and then suddenly light comes a scripture i've been looking at every time light comes from it and when that's why when you hear someone who knows how to access the deep things of god he will share a scripture you have been studying for years and bring a light that will let you know you you look as if you are not born again hallelujah light by the spirit this is a spiritual principle that we have all practiced strategies by the spirit strategies by the spirit strategies by the spirit everything you see us do we never do anything that we do not have a word for strategies by the spirit and let me tell you the instructions of god when they come to you is the wisdom of god they may not make sense hallelujah one day i was praying for a lady and the lord said i should tell her to lay both of her hands on my head that was a strategy for her miracle it didn't make sense however she got healed are you following me very important i'll never forget steve please come we're going to pangshin for our crusade and the car spoiled on the way remember i mean the car spoiled we did everything we could do the crusade was to start by five at about three we're still on the way can you imagine that kind of embarrassment we're angry we prayed we did everything and everybody just went to sit there everywhere we just said god i mean and then while steve sat down he began to play the mistral please can you play this good old mistral that's brought us a lot of things strategies by the spirit suddenly god gave me a strategy and brown i'll never forget at once we got angry in our spirits and all of us everybody enter the car they are all witnesses enter the car and that's how we had, the driver had been trying to keep steve just 
started playing and he didn't stop playing and we all started praying in tongues and we told the driver he wasn't a believer so just do whatever we tell you to do now kick this car strategies he tried kicking we just kicked this car and then he kicked the car that had we did everything we could do and the car started suddenly and that's how we drove that car right to the crusade crowd see let me tell you when you know how to access the wisdom of the spirit you will never be in a position where you don't know the way to come out that's why the bible says for we know that all things a believer can never be disadvantaged because at every time t there is a way to access the strategy of the spirit that can turn everything good or bad in the realm of the spirit it makes no difference god can multiply by a factor that will work out for your good hallelujah we're going to massacre for our crusade and i said lord how will a young man like me stand before the pfn in abuja and talk to them about a crusade you know how many of you who are pastors know how controversial all of these meetings can be people say you have come to establish a church in our place i've all you these small boys you know and so on and so forth but then god gave me a strategy when he gave me the strategy i went manasseh is my witness i met the pfn as a corporate body only once and these people began to run their lives to death to organize this crusade many of them old enough to be my father they went out of their ways to do things and when many of them saw me i mean the whole eni team when we came and they looked at me wearing jeans some of them were angry i said you mean is this small boy that is me it's not about me for when you find the strategy your age your size whether you can speak english or not is totally irrelevant because when it is established in the heavens nothing will stop it in this realm hallelujah it's time for us to begin to rule it's time for us to begin to reign hallelujah every time you see me preach and then i sing and then i preach and then i sing you know why that was a strategy that was revealed to me when i began to seek god and when he began to walk in me god told me son this is going to be your strategy And so the anointing came and caused me to begin to walk in that way. And it has become a pattern. Are you following me, please? Strategies. I hail you most high. The clash of the Simba. Many of you find out that I love the clash of the Simba because it was a spiritual strategy that was given i found out about the davidic order of worship the patterns that david followed to access the heart of god and i saw he said praise him with the ten stringed instrument praise him with the clash of the simba i truly hear you most high I hear you most high I said Lord grant me a supernatural ability that I will never lack words to speak in due season I said Lord what is the spiritual pattern what dimension of the spirit is responsible for that operation and then the Lord took me to psalms 45 my heart is indicting a good matter yeah i speak of excellent things it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer my tongue is a pen of a ready writer and from that day what the bible calls the gift of utterance came upon me the ability to communicate spiritual things to compare spiritual things spiritual Hallelujah. 
I told God something. I said, Lord, grant me grace. So I don't run into trouble and live an immoral life and do all of these things. I said, Lord, I'm a young man. What's the way forward? And as I prayed, the Lord gave me a revelation. Hallelujah. He gave me a revelation from his word. He said, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Jude 24 has only one chapter. And light came from that scripture. It was a strategy. Many times when I talk to ladies, I tease them and I say, if not because of that scripture, maybe I'll have children that will fool your luxurious hostel. But there is a strategy. The Bible says, how can a young man keep his way pure? He said, by meditating on the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. Accessing the deep things of God. By praying in the spirit. That every time you begin to pray in the spirit, what happens? The Holy Ghost begins to search. The Bible says, he searches the mind. And begins to that's how do you know that that's how many that's how many people in the world write songs by divination hallelujah they listen to yani or under the influence of all kinds of things and the demonic spirit starts searching and he searches the new trend of music that will happen in the next five years and brings it and reveals it to michael jackson and all of these people and then they begin to sing it and they open up the new trend that's how the holy spirit can search things the holy spirit who sees the future will search things and give you instructions now that will not make sense but as you walk you will find out that you are walking in the wisdom of the are you listening to me when the woman came and met the prophet he gave her a strategy he said what do you have in your house and the woman said nothing except a cruise of oil he said quickly go and borrow vessels borrow not a few are you following me now we must know how to access the things of the spirit never try to do things in the spirit without the word of god and the voice of god giving you the strategy you will fail no matter how it looks like it's working he said the spirit searching all things yea the deep things of god and we are going to pray right now we are going to say lord as i begin to pray in tongues such deep things concerning my destiny many of us need deep things concerning the new levels of our lives many of us need it concerning our finances our, and our businesses stop beating around the bush search for the strategies of the spirit rise up on your feet we are going to be praying in tongues as you pray in tongues pray with the understanding that the Holy Ghost is manifesting himself tonight as the revealer of secrets the Holy Ghost has given people names of streets where they met managers, directors that were linked to the next levels of their life go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit take it serious inside and outside Inside and outside, Makata Parika Tabali Arabaka. For the Holy Ghost has made these things known. Makata Teke Tabal Arabaka Sida. Such, such the Spirit of God. The counsel of the Father concerning our lives, our finances, our businesses. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit. Concerning your ministry, such pray in the Spirit. It's an intelligence of the spirit. It's a manifestation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. My sheep share my voice. Come on, pray. Travel in the spirit. Receive strategies that will change your life.
that will make you a wonder. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. I watched a, a program on it, Supernatural Seed Roth, interviewing John Hunter. And they shared the story of a woman who had been trusting God for the finances of their family. They had done everything they knew how to do. Hallelujah. And then she went to the Lord and she prayed. And the Lord caused her to sleep. When she slept, she saw an optical design. You know, something about medicine, just optics. And when she, she got up with that same revelation and she drew it. I follow me now and she took it to the hospital just casually and then she showed the consultants and when they looked at it they were all amazed and they looked at her they said where did you get this she said she found it from her dream I follow me now and then they looked at it they said they had been researching to solve the problem that that optical design brought and they said for starters they gave her right there and then 20 million dollars a check of 20 million dollars as a result of receiving a strategy from the spirit i have seen an evil upon the sun that servants are riding on horses while the prince is walk afoot he said you will die like men men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah strategies some of the songs that we sing here they are strategies you just pray in tongues and you lie down and sleep and suddenly you hear the melodies of heaven hallelujah so praying in tongues is not just a symbol of pentecostalism it gives an opportunity to engage the holy ghost to begin to search mysteries about your life i challenge you this week write out the areas of your life where you trust god for wisdom for direction for breakthrough and begin to allow the holy spirit to search out for strategies are you listening to me strategies by the spirit jacob had a strategy and his 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 cattle were were even more than that of laban strategies by the spirit Joseph had went to the Lord and lifted the threat letter and cried and God gave him a strategy. He said, this is the strategy. Let the worshippers be in front. I'm giving you a strategy. Don't use another one. It will not work. The Holy Ghost searches the mind of the Father. He says, this is the strategy. Customize to bring you this unique victory. Can I tell you something? A strategy may work for you today. It will not work tomorrow. That's why you never assume on the Holy Spirit that at every time T you seek Him to find out strategy. That's why Jesus told someone, Get up, take your mat, and then to another person, He spat on the ground. What was He doing? Receiving strategies. While it is yet morning, He will retreat and go and travel and allow the Spirit to search. And then when they brought vessels, He said, Fill them with water, go and serve the people. What kind of thing is that? strategies by the spirit when he was delayed in his life he was praying and praying and praying and the holy ghost after praying he got up received the strategy and started walking on water walked on water and caught up with the people i am convinced hear me friends if you receive a strategy from the lord you will reign in this life are you ready to pray now say lord my spirit is open for my job, for my life, go ahead and pray. Leka parato sataya, rateka basi kete baladabasha. Oh, there is a way. There is a way. There is a way. Let the spirit search. We cannot know the way until you reveal it to us. The spirit of God. There is a way for your finances. There is a way for your life, for your destiny, for your promotion, for your increase. There is a way. Let the spirit search the deep things of God. Come on, engage the spirit, communicate the wisdom, engage the spirit, it will set you above. Make a palata sick at 
Barrios, de pronto se pegue, Rakata Baranabasa, come on, pray, the Holy Ghost is Sachi, pray, the Holy Ghost is Sachi, the deep things of the kingdom. You will hear a voice, come on, pray, you will hear a voice. The voice will say, this is the way. Walk, Jerry. Then you will find rest. He will share a voice. Pray until you share the voice. Pray until you share the voice. It's a sacrifice. But when the voice comes, you will find rest. When the voice comes, you will find rest. Pray, access the big things for your family. Lord, how are we getting out of this debt as a family? Pray, how are we getting out of debt as a family? You have suffered until the strategy comes. The suffering continues. You can read your Bible, but until the strategy comes, it's tied to the voice of God. Come on, pray for more. This is for your destiny. Pray for more. The voice is speaking. Pray for more. The voice is speaking. Pray. The voice is speaking. In the name of Jesus. Speaking, speaking, speaking. The Holy Ghost is searching the deep things of God. It has been written in the volume of the books. It has been written concerning your life. Your life is not a mistake. Your life is not an accident. It has been written. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hear me. The word of God says, No, I come in the volume of the book as it is what written it has been written your life has been drafted you are a prophecy in fulfillment stop struggling what is in the book let the holy ghost guide you your life should not be trial and error according to the prophetic pattern that has been written in the book what is it for your life hallelujah hallelujah we are not on air today not because we cannot go on air according to the strategy we receive from God the season has not come yet so no matter what motivation someone brings we'll say thank you when you hear God you will know how to say thank you to opportunities that open but are not of God not every open door is anointed friends are you listening to me When I began to search for the venue for Koinonia, I was praying by the Spirit. I love praying because I know the Lord will shock me with a new strategy. I had a list of many ministries that I wrote. And as soon as I was praying, I was just praying. And then I had in my spirit CGC. I saw written CGC. That was it. No struggle, no nothing. I said, Lord, how will this happen? And then we went to Prof's house and God connected us through Prof and we have this venue today. What you see today is a brainchild of the strategies of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The voice of God will end sorrow in your life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Believe this. It's God's provision for you. When you find yourself in a crossroad, stop trying. If you could help, you would not be in the crossroad in the first place. And so trust the spirit. Take on the wisdom of the spirit. Begin to pray. Many of us just pray because we want to feel electrified. And then we fall down and then we get up. No. Every time I pray, I pray with excitement. Because I say, just give me room. Let me pray. I tell them every time in the leaders meeting. Whenever we are speaking and there is a situation, I say, no. Let's pray about it. Oh, for when I go to him in the secret, the Holy Ghost will search he and I initializing 2011 November what is the prophetic blueprint and then the Holy Spirit says son this is what you do and then when God tells us what to do whether we like it or not we are going to do it 
it's not about your feelings it's about his word hallelujah when they were building Canaan land they had fixed all the doors and everything and they found out that there was an adjustment they needed to do in the auditorium hallelujah and the 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 truck that they would push in would not enter because and all the architects with their intellect and everything they said we have to break this door oh they said no don't break any door and he went and locked himself and began to pray and when he prayed he came out he said here's the strategy puncture the tire push it in pump it back simple strategies by the spirit is it amazing how we suffer again and again until the strategy of the spirit comes that's what we do sometimes when we are ministry you see us do foolish things we can just say the holy spirit says shout jesus strategy that's the kind of me that's why you see for every case there is a wisdom of the spirit that guides and all we keep doing is worshiping until the voice comes you can't guess and assume you will be disappointed we wait on him until his voice comes and then the lord begins to move and says let the people shout jesus three times and then we shout jesus and we ourselves are amazed seeing the wonders yeah. hallelujah lord i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that from tonight they will learn to pray in the spirit until that voice comes receive the quickening grace of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ receive the quickening grace of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ i speak it into your life i prophesy it into your life receive it in the name of jesus the ability to stay until you hear divine direction from god you will tap into the wisdom of the spirit you want to go and preach somewhere and they say preach on greatness just say ah greatness i know the scripture why do you know the scripture you begin to pray this is our secret let me tell you something a prayerless christian is truly a powerless christian and then a christian that prays amiss is also a suffering christian because you pray for hours i see people pray and fast and fast and fast and pray for hours but they pray amiss beating about the bush not knowing the ways and the path of the spirit have you learned something tonight hallelujah so throughout this week this is the assignment now write it you're going to list all the areas of your life that you are trusting god for victories and breakthroughs and you will lock yourself somewhere and pray put worship song hallelujah and pray in the spirit until to pray with your bible in your hands because oftentimes the lord will communicate his wisdom to you through the word you're just praying and you hear isaiah 25 verse 18 write it down keep praying keep praying then you will get a direction and when you move you will find rest for your souls this is a strategy that will set you above forever lift up your hands as we round up lord we thank you for tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 